Rome is the eternal city. Now, Rome wasn't built in a day, and it has dozens of layers of history over thousands of years. But at this point in time, a lot of the monuments need help. And that's why you see a lot of scaffolding all throughout the city. There's a lot of effort from a lot of people, from the city, from the state, and from outside sponsors. Let's take a look at that work, and let's see what work is being done. You can't escape it when you come to the city of Rome today. You see scaffolding up everywhere on monuments. That includes the Colosseum, the Trevi Fountain, and here at the Spanish Steps. What's going on? Well, you have a big merger between ideas of the city, the state, and of course looking for sponsorship. And there are big names that are participating. Todd's, Fendi, Bulgaria. And what we want also is transparency. We want to be able to see the work done, we want a time frame, and we want to see great results. And that's what you're going to see in the coming months in the city of Rome. Conservation projects are costly, the investment is large, the scaffolding goes up, and you can't see the monument. But the results are epic, and they're well worth the wait. Here we see the results from the restoration work of the Pyramid of Gaius Cestius. You also get a great view onto the restoration work which is still ongoing on the Pyramid of Cestius here at the Protestant Cemetery. This is one of the great conservation projects in Rome. The restoration, the conservation, the cleaning of the Colosseum. The project continues and will culminate and conclude in 2016. And what it's done is jumpstart the idea of what is our heritage, what does it mean to us, what do we need to do to preserve it. The Colosseum was definitely in need of a restoration job and it's finally gotten what it deserves. This is an 18 month project. This is financed by Fendi and what you have is a total restoration project. Not just cleaning, but the stabilization, the evaluation of the entire monument. And at the same time with this a catwalk or sidewalk allows you to get close to the monument and see the work that's being done. And we're gonna have to have a lot of patience because it's a long time, but the results will be stunning. This is the valley between the Aventine Hill and the Palatine Hill. And essentially it's the spot that becomes the venue of the greatest sporting events held by the Romans. 250,000 people cheered the chariot races in the Circus Maximus. And this is a place that's largely unexplored. There are still modern concerts that take place today in Rome. But on the eastern end, we have some excavations that have largely been abandoned. But now, there's a new restoration project. Work is being completed and that area will become accessible to the public. And the new idea is to close the street between the Circus Maximus and the Palatine Hill and merge these two sites together as they were once in antiquity. The Circus Maximus project isn't just restoration and consolidation, it's also ongoing excavation where new information about the life of the Circus Maximus and after its abandonment in the medieval times is being unearthed. The walls of the Emperor Aurelian were constructed in the 270s AD and it was in use to protected Rome all the way through into the 19th century. And this is the largest monument of ancient Rome. But in different parts, it's a challenge. It's falling down. It's also being restored. But when you have a lack of funds and you put up a barrier wall like this to prevent pedestrians from getting hurt from pieces falling down, ultimately, if you don't intervene immediately, it gets further overgrown. There are capers growing along the walls. There are trees that have taken root and are growing up. This is a monument that needs to be saved. It's the largest monument of ancient Rome, bigger than the Circus Maximus, bigger than the Colosseum. We need to do more. 
Serbian wall is an impressive circuit still today. Made between the 6th and the 4th centuries BC, what we have here is a section on the Aventine Hill dating to the 4th century BC. And this structure is made of Grotta Scura tuff, this volcanic stone. Tuff was abundant in the city of Rome and further afield with better and better qualities. This material comes from Bay, just in about 9 kilometers outside of Rome. But what happens over time when it's exposed and not treated with the stucco covering over such a long time is it will deteriorate, it will flake off, and it will disappear, and ultimately the stability of the entire wall becomes challenged. This protective fence is the intervention, is the result of a site that's largely been abandoned. And they're starting to consolidate and take care of this site of the Serbian wall. I'm here in the Esquiline Hills amidst the ruins of the Baths of Frajan, and they sit on top of the remains of the Domus Audi. The Domus Aurea is one of the most famous monuments made in ancient Roman times of the emperors. And this is a structure that's at risk as it's buried beneath these later baths of Trajan. It needs 31 million euros to restore the site and make it accessible to the public. Currently, the ministry is looking for private sponsorship and even announced the use of crowdfunding. And you can today go on limited occasions to view the work that's being done. Let's go take a look at that. But what you see is the undertaking beneath is massive. All of these conservators are working, all the scaffolding is up to protect and preserve and cure the system of infiltration which is ruining this precious mud. Now the work is overdue, but thankfully it's being done now and it will preserve the Domosauria for future generations. Ancient Rome did not exist in a vacuum. And after the fall, the city was torn down, stripped, burnt and reused, recycled. And nowhere is that recycling clearer than here at the Theater of Marcellus. And you hear a lot about the conservation of Rome. We've seen a lot of the sites of ancient Rome that are being restored today. But so much more needs to be done if we want to preserve the eternal city.